Welcome back to the Health Longevity Secrets Show with your host, Dr. Robert Lufkin. His book, Lies I Taught in Medical School, is a New York Times bestseller. And now, please enjoy this week's episode, where we explore the dangers of sugar with Dr. Michael Gorin. This week, we get to discuss the secrets to safeguarding your child's health with insights from Dr. Michael Goran, a leading authority in pediatric nutrition and obesity. Discover the unsettling truths about added sugars and their profound impact on children's cognitive abilities, mental health, as well as risk for chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease. Dr. Goran unpacks the critical differences between natural and added sugars and reveals the alarming presence of added sugars in infant formulas despite guidelines advising against them for children under two years of age. Equipped with over 400 peer-reviewed articles, Dr. Goran offers actionable advice and strategies to help parents manage their family's sugar intake. Learn about the recommended limits for sugar consumption for both adults and children, and find out how to spot hidden sugars in processed junk foods. This episode is a treasure trove of vital information for anyone looking to maintain optimal health and protect their loved ones from the hidden dangers of added sugars. Tune in to gain invaluable knowledge and take control of your family's nutritional well-being. This episode is sponsored by SciFox Health. One of the most common questions I get asked is which blood tests I check myself on a regular basis. Well, I check 17 biomarkers, but the secret is I'm able to do everything from the convenience of my home. I collect a sample with just a simple finger stick like this. You don't need to be a doctor to do it. Then I just mail it in and wait for the results. SciFox Health makes it possible. Use the link below to get 15% off. This episode is brought to you by L Nutra, maker of the Prolong Fasting Mimicking Diet. If you'd like to try it, use the link in the show notes for 20% off. Osteoporosis is a silent killer, causing one in two women and one in four men over age 50 to break a bone. And these fractures can be fatal. Now, the usual way to detect osteoporosis is with something called a DEXA scan, which requires radiation. But if you've already had a CT scan, we can now use that data to test for osteoporosis without the radiation of a DEXA. Check the show notes to find out how and save $50 off. And now, please enjoy this week's episode. Our presenter for this discussion is Dr. Michael Garan, who is professor and vice chairman for research at the Department of Pediatrics and the program director for nutrition and obesity at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles at the Keck School of Medicine, USC. His research on infant and childhood nutrition has been continuously funded by the NIH for 35 years, and he has published over 400 peer-reviewed article, so he really knows what he's talking about. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining us. Sure. Well, nice to see you. Yep. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah. It's it's great to be back together again. I'm so excited about talking today. I wanted to give a shout out for your, your outstanding book called Sugar Proof, and I was going to hold it up, but I realized I don't have a copy anymore. And I think it's because I've been handing them out to everybody, and that's a sign of a good book. So yeah, I'll send you great, some more copies if you like. <laughs> it's a great book. It's written for for lay people, but it has a a scientific uh, background to it too. So it's 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 a wonderful book. I recommend it highly. Thank you. But today we're we're going to talk about sugar, and um, you're an expert in that. So maybe let's just start off. What is uh, sugar and um, yeah, what, what is sugar and why is it such a problem? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So we're, we're mainly talking here about added sugars just to be straight. So, so because sugar, you know, there's over 250 names for different types of sugars. Um, and obviously there's, sugar, there's natural sugars in fruit and natural sugars in milk. 
those are those are kind of you know part of the natural makeup of dairy and fruits. We're not talking about that. Pretty much going to talk about the sugars added to food during processing. Uh, so that's added sugars, um, and those. The evidence is pretty clear it can affect multiple parts of the body starting early in life and we, we're talking here about effects multiple effects on pretty much any organ of the body uh, not just on health and well-being but also learning and mental health and cognitive ability as well so really uh, and what we're finding is that kids are more susceptible to some of those effects and kids are obviously bombarded every day with uh, exposure to these added sugars. Now, wait, wait a minute. What, when I was growing up, and, and full disclosure, my mom was a dietitian, so I got the latest, at least nutritional advice. We were always told that sugar was, was we knew sugar was bad for us because it added sugar, because it caused cavities in our teeth, and and maybe you gain weight. But you're you're not saying that you're saying that the problem is bigger as far as mental health and chronic disease and w what do you mean by that well just just by that yeah it's uh, you know the dental decay is is it, it, that something you can see right so the, it's much more visceral um but there's lots of other hidden effects that aren't as obvious that are maybe more slowly Evolving, it might even be conditions that weren't of concern to your mother when she was raising you, right? So we have new problems emerging in kids like type two diabetes, fatty liver disease. These weren't even problems when I started research in this area 30 years ago. These are relatively new conditions that are beginning to become more apparent at a younger age and are hard to attribute directly to sugar because they're more subtle and you can't necessarily see the impact of sugars on the liver or on the pancreas or on the heart. But we're learning more and more about how sugar impacts the development of almost every organ in the body. Wow. So um, what what is a good amount of sugar to have then? You're saying no added sugar, but what if I go out and eat a bunch of uh, figs or, you know, a bunch, if I just binge on fruit or things that naturally have sugar in it, is that okay? Yeah, like I said, we're not, we're not really con too concerned about the natural sugars in fruit. Dried fruit might be a little different because we tend to overconsume it. So like nobody's going to go out and eat three whole apples, right? But uh, you might have a handful of figs, which you mentioned, which is one of my favorite foods, actually. I, I love dried figs. Um, I might eat that as a snack or use it uh, as a sweetener in food. We're really talking about all the processed foods with added sugars. Uh, something to watch out for. And the recommendations there are, are pretty clear. Uh, and the newest recommendation from the Dietary Guidelines for America is zero added sugars for infants aged zero to two years of age. That's just in the last couple of years as a, as a new recommendation. And then after two years of age, it gradually increases towards what it is for adults, which is also a WHO recommendation, which is about 10% of calories which computes to about um what is it 25 grams per day of added sugars wow so um back to the the, the what you mentioned about infants zero to two or, or zero added sugars for for newborns but aren't aren't a lot of the the baby formulas don't they have sugar in them yeah uh glad you asked that but very um, unfortunate ambiguity we have in, our, in, in the food system. So what's surprising, you're exactly right. In fact, more than 50% of all infant formula is made with uh, either corn syrup or sucrose, which is non-existent in breast milk. I would call that an added sugar. Would you call that an added sugar? 
I would, yes. <laughs> the USDA and the government and the, the Fed, federal government makes formula exempt from being labeled as added sugar. So even though on the one hand they say infants should have zero added sugars, they're saying that formula can have added sugar. Uh, it's, it's really a big loophole, which is something that we're very concerned about. And what it comes down to is that for, there's very, very strict guidelines on what can and cannot go in infant formula. But what I can't believe is that, so for example, they have vitamins and minerals with spe specified amounts, but there's no regulation on the carbohydrate content of formula. Well, isn't, isn't that, that amazing? Yeah, it is. Isn't that regulation on the infant formula that that's for protection, right? That's for protection, not of the infant, but for protection of the sugar manufacturers who are or the, the food manufacturers who are adulterating the formula with the with the added sugar, which you you as an expert in sugar and, and the recommendations are that infants should have zero sugar. So <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's like I said, it's not just me who's saying that it's the USDA. Yeah. Dietary guidelines for America themselves who have endorsed that view, but yet they're allowing um, f food companies to make formula with corn syrup. Wow. And, they're, you know, I can't really fathom that out, but what I've learned is that corn syrup as a, as a product or as, or as an ingredient is cheaper and easier to work with in food processing than lactose lactose in case there's any doubt lactose is practically the only carbohydrate in breast milk other than oligosaccharides um, but lactose is an expensive ingredient but i think our infants deserve the nutrition that was meant to be that's coming from breast milk yeah, so instead of lactose, which is the natural uh, form that's present in breast milk, what we're, we're seeing is uh, corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup, variations of corn syrup. And my understanding, corn syrup, of course, is ubiquitous in our junk foods, all our processed junk foods that make up most of what we eat today is is has a lot of corn syrup in it. My understanding was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that the corn syrup was used, one, because it has a much longer shelf life than than conventional cane sugar, but two, because of the subsidies from the federal government, corn is subsidized to a greater extent than anything else. So it's actually cheaper uh, than these. So the, the corn syrup has found its way into everything just because of the cost factors and and shelf life is that is that your understanding also that's yeah that's right yeah um also there's there's i don't know how this got started but there's some misconception among parents I and mean, it's an idea also promoted by the formula industry that babies who are quote unquote fussy have lactose intolerance and which we know is not really a prevalent problem amongst babies but there's a consumer misunderstanding that they're that they're, that their infants might be lactose intolerant and so that's why formula companies that's one reason why they say they don't use lactose because they're marketing it for babies who could be lactose intolerant even though that's really not a problem in the population which is also mind-boggling for me because if I was lactose intolerant, I wouldn't put corn syrup in my cereal or in my coffee, right? I would, <laughs> there's other ways to get around lactose intolerance. Even if it's true, there's better ways to deal with it than going straight to corn syrup. Yeah, yeah. Well, now looking at adults, this this very conservative regulatory, government regulatory agency, which puts recommended limits on uh, how much sugar we should eat for adults, um, they they put a recommended limit of 25 grams, correct? Yes. How much is that? What, put that in perspective. Uh, you know, what 
what what types of foods would have 25 grams of sugar in them? How much how much is that? Uh, that well, that, well, in simple terms, that's a can of soda, pretty much, which is what 20 to 25 grams. Um, well, that's about 10 teaspoons. Um, another way to kind of visualize it. Uh, so, you know, it can add up pretty quickly. You know, uh, average slice of bread could have three or four grams of added sugar. Um, tablespoon of ketchup could have four or five grams of added sugar. So it's it's in everyday items and can add up pretty quickly. Aside from the main main contributors, which would be things like uh, soda or juice, which is another weird um, paradox because the USD again doesn't count those as added sugars um, because it's fruit sugar. But you know, if you have a glass of apple juice, that could easily be 20, 25 grams of what I would call free sugar. It's sugar that's liberated from the whole fruit. So it's much more concentrated and in liquid form uh, and it's that concentrated liquid form of sugar that's most problematic for the body. Yeah, I mean, some people recommend to, to not to drink your calories and eat your fruit, don't drink it. And to your right. point, you know, we can eat one apple and it has all sorts of healthy fiber with it. But if I drink a glass of apple juice, which is the equivalent of three or four or five apples that are all crushed together uh, without any of the fiber that can be very, very unhealthy. Why isn't this, why isn't this more well-known? I mean, these are, these are scientific societies that have these recommendations. I mean, you're recommending them. Um, why hasn't this reached the public awareness yet? Why, why, are we even having this conversation now? <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, I think there's very, I think there's a strong, you know, the, the, the food lobby is, should not be underestimated and is very strong and is everywhere. So for example, just as an example, we wrote an op-ed on this issue on formula, uh, which is sh shocking to many people and parents that I've spoken to. Um, can't really get any bites from from bit from from the main media organizations to publish such a thing. I think I don't know exactly why, but um, maybe they don't want to get embroiled in the discussion. There's you know there's strong food lobby uh, people who don't want this information released. Um, so I don't know. Um, we, you know, we're trying our best to get the information out there and so that the population understands these issues. Um, but I think we can't underestimate the power and the activity of the food industry lobby that's not in their best interest to have this information broadly available. Yeah, in your in your book, you you um, outlined many strategies for how individuals can become healthier by having less sugar. Maybe could you share just a couple of those in the last few minutes with our audience? Uh, give them some advice. Yeah, of course. So we also already mentioned liquid sugar, which is the, the main source of. Uh, added sugar, so sodas, juices, etc. And, and you know, but we still need strategies for how to how to implement that in real life. See, it's it's easy to say, oh, you shouldn't drink soda or juice, but how do you actually pull that off in your family? So one, um, you know, one way is just to not bring it into the house, not make it available, not make it readily available. Kids are going to get access to it outside of the house and you don't have control over that as much, but you do have control over what comes into the house. Uh, breakfast is another big area, especially for kids. Breakfast tends to be very high in sugars and low in nutritional quality. And we have a lot of strategies and tips in the book for working with breakfast. We know it's often a chaotic fast meal that has to happen quickly. 
Um, but it's is important for young kids, and we have a lot of strategies on how to just just you know subtly tip the balance away from sugar and towards more protein and more fiber and more nutrient quality. Um, so breakfast is important, and then hidden sugars is another one. Uh, we Kate, we started off talking about that at the beginning of the conversation, but I would encourage families to go to their pantries or check things out at the grocery store when you're about to buy it. It's tough because ingredient lists are so complicated. There's over 250 names, but check everyday items like your ketchups and peanut butters and yogurts. Check everything, every processed food. There's definitely good options without added sugars and the added sugars from those processed foods can add up quickly so those will be the three things liquid sugar don't bring it into the house breakfast see if you can trade off sugar for more protein and fiber you don't need to put jam on toast or syrup on pancakes as other stuff and then look out for the hidden sugars yeah, well, in, in addition to reading your book, how can people uh, find out more about your work, say, on social media or your website? Could you share that with us now? Sure. The website is sugarproofkids.com, and uh, the book is available everywhere books are sold in all formats. And then our main social media outlet is on Instagram currently, which is sugarproofkids is the tag. Right. Well, thanks so much, Michael, for spending time with us today. This has been really informative and really opened my eyes a bit. And also, thanks, thanks so much for all the great work you're doing. And thank you. Thank you for doing this as well, for helping get the word out and sharing uh, strategies for optimal health. Thank you so much. If you are enjoying this program, please hit that subscribe button or even better, leave a review. Your support makes it possible for us to create the quality programming that we're continually striving for. Can I start? Is it recording? It's already recording. Oh, sorry. This is for general information and educational purposes only. And it's not intended to constitute or substitute for medical advice or counseling. The practice of medicine or the provision of healthcare diagnosis or treatment or the creation of a physician patient or a clinical relationship the use of this information is at their own, uh, own user's risk if you find this to be on the value please hit that like button to subscribe to support the work that we do on this channel and we take the your suggestions and advice very seriously so please let us know what you'd like to see on this channel thanks for watching and we hope to see you next time I think that was good. Yes. All right. You need to save the recording. Are you ready?